I'm Fred Dawson. I'm the editor of Screenplays Magazine, and we have an opportunity to discuss a new development in the marketplace that could have a whole lot to do with moving the market forward with respect to the delivery of live content, uh, online, premium content in the so-called TV Everywhere domain as well as uh, through individual content providers to enable a much more fluid consumer experience that's TV-like than we've ever seen before as a function of a new way of doing security in live content. And we have with us um, representatives from Envivio, Erdetto, and Microsoft, each of whom are contributing a major piece to this uh, solution that we'll be seeing in the marketplace over the year ahead. Let me introduce who's speaking with us right now. Uh, we have to my far left Paul Raglan, who is the Vice President of Sales for Americas with Ardetto. Ardetto, of course, is one of the leading providers of security in the premium content space. And, uh, they're bringing that expertise into this. Uh, next to him is Chris Santini, who is the Director of Business Strategy for Security Business at Microsoft. And Microsoft is the provider of the key solution here, which is Play Ready Live. And finally, um, to my immediate left, we have Arnaud Perrier, who is the Vice President of Solutions for Invivio. Invivio, of course, is one of the leading suppliers of transcoding and streaming solutions in the marketplace. And now we're going to learn exactly what this is all about. Uh, so let me just set the stage a little bit because um, this is complex. Uh, what we have in live streaming and with the content protection around live is a more challenging uh, type of environment than we have with the traditional on-demand uh, content that we've seen as part of the TV Everywhere uh, solution up to now. And the big thing that's happening, of course, is uh, TV Everywhere, if you want to call it that, multi-screen services is probably a better term, is going mainstream. TV is becoming multi-screen, in other words. And so that means live TV and a full uh, lineup of channels when it comes to what a service provider is offering is becoming more or less mandatory as part of the whole game. And the question is, how do you get that solution out there in a way that really uh, is compelling enough to get people to watch just as they would uh, their normal TV channels? Let's begin by uh, asking Chris to give us a sense of what uh, Play Ready Live is all about and how it's different from what we've known about Play Ready in the past. Okay, so Play Ready really started as a, a device-centric technology primarily to service Windows endpoints, Windows, Windows Phone, and Xbox, and then we licensed it to over 1,100 people uh, for iOS devices, Android devices, set-top boxes, and Blu-rays. And what we found in that device-centric type business or a VOD business, there was some complexity to offering live, early window, and premium content um, by content owners that necessitated a new way to architect the solution, but then also a new way to go to market uh, with partners to enable uh, that TV everywhere experience, making the tablets um, the first-class citizen of the TV and giving the consumers what they expect um, from a live broadcast event. Let's talk a little bit about what it is that that's solving in terms of what the problems are in, before this solution has come into the market and what the challenges are. Paul, maybe you can uh, illuminate that a little bit as to what, what, we're, what we're dealing with in the live environment for a multi-channel uh, distribution network uh, that, that is quite challenging. Yes, I mean, I think what you're seeing is uh, an evolution in, in, in security uh, to connected devices. Um, we've been a long time service provider of, of Microsoft's DRM technologies, and uh, we've seen Play Ready advance uh, to, to uh, a point where you know, we're, we're meeting a much higher level of consumer expectation by um, creating a, an experience that's much more fluid. Uh, uh, there's there's less latency and, and we're getting as close as we can to replicating uh, um, what consumers expect uh, in terms of experience of, that they have on the television set to what they have on these connected platforms. Uh, so this is a major innovation being released by Microsoft and we're, you know, we're, we're, we have integrated it and uh, are embracing it as fast as we can uh, to, uh, to help our operator customers compete as they migrate a lot of this programming uh, to these platforms. Uh, this is just one more element that helps them uh, compete. It, it makes the service stable, um, and it, you know it makes a, it, it delivers on what consumers really expect right now. 
So there's some specific, specific challenges that this is uh, meeting mm -hmm. in that regard. I guess one of those has to do with the fact that because it's live content and it's high value, um, there's a need to be renewing the security uh, mm -hmm. on, a, on a periodic basis, which up to now has been a pretty manual kind of process. Is that right? Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about how that impedes the, the user experience as it's currently practiced. Well, sure. The, at the best case, your content protection schema should be invisible or seamless to the end user. The challenge was really the experience wasn't um, presented to the end user because he couldn't secure either the content rights for high value content or there were significant concerns by the service providers of being in risk of breach. And so what the specific features and functionality that Play Ready for Live TV enables, um, the key one is probably the key automatic key rotation. The ability to rotate the keys as frequently as up to every two seconds. So if you have a very high value, say a sports asset, whether that's uh, European football or ultimate fighting here, which seems to be very popular in North America, um, that's a high value asset. And being able to change those keys frequently um, to meet content owners' demands will then enable that piece of content to be displayed on a tablet, uh, on a PC, as it is in those kind of more managed closed environments on a TV screen. What about the, the issue of changing channels, if you will, in a live environment and making that like a TV kind of service when you do have to assign uh, you know, the security on that stream as the channel's being changed? Does this have some impact on that? Yeah, I, I would say that um, from our perspective, we're not doing anything to add additional latency through that, the way we've architected it with Live. That's really the, a lot of the work that both Ordetto and Invivio have done okay. uh, to create that compelling experience. Um, but from our perspective at Microsoft, we're enabling the, the content to flow to those devices, and then they're creating that experience that people expect. Well, that brings us then, uh, to Arno, to it's exactly what it is that you guys are executing in the use of this solution to, uh, to address the kind of issue I just mentioned and other issues. Okay. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, both Erdetto and Microsoft have been, you know, long-time partners in the multi-screen market, and we've, uh, you know, the, the way we went to market with this is fairly simple, is we've had a number of, you know, common uh, operators you know, um, cable operators, tier one in particular in North America and Europe that have been using, you know, the prior version of PlayReady with their dead OQ servers. And uh, so far we were performing the, uh, the encryption on the, on the Halo, uh, on the NVIDIA Muse encoders or the, the NVIDIA Halo um, network video processing product, right? So what we did is we worked closely with Microsoft and Erdetto to implement a new PlayReady live spec to turn on this uh, this um, key rotation feature, right? So it's simple, you know, enhancements to the APIs between our Halo uh, software product, right? Uh, the product that uh, actually performs the encryption, mm -hmm. so it takes the keys from the from the Adobe servers, uh, encrypts all those chunks, and uh, and sends them on to the uh, to the clients, right? So that's the essence of the of the work we've done. Um, and uh, from, a, from a user experience standpoint, the gain is sig significant because uh, you, uh, you really have to, you, you, you obtain a seamless experience when you change channels, right? Prior to that, you, the client would have to restart a brand new session when you go to a new channel. So if you're on an iPad, you maybe have to wait for 10 seconds for that new channel to actually come up. It's not a TV-like experience, right? And from a, from an operator from an operation standpoint, it was a, it was a big burden because you had up to now a fixed key for maybe a, a period of 24 hours on a given live channel, and the only way you could change that is in the maintenance window, maybe in the middle of the night, <laughs> hoping that yeah. you hit you know you affect as least users as possible, right? Manually change that key and leave it on for another day, right? And when you have to do that for, you know, hundreds or thousands of live linear channels in the MSO world, it just, it just becomes impossible, right? And, uh, and uh, the, the contractual issue also um, is, a, is an impediment to that, right? So, so in, in, in regard to um, the, uh, the way in which Play Ready Live uh, works um, a across all these devices, um, there's, there's there's some co complexity involved there, right, as far as um, adapting whatever it is those devices require in, in, in terms of their native formats and DRMs and, and that sort of thing. So there's, there's some pretty 
uh, complicated processing that just goes into the execution of Play Ready across all those devices. Is that right? Yeah, well, the way that, that Play Ready works is that we provide a software development kit to our trusted partners, in, in this case, or Dedo, and they will take that software development kit and create unique client implementations based on their customer requirements mm -hmm. um, and do a lot of the hardening, a lot of the integration, and the testing to then target a broad set of devices. Um, from our perspective, we look to them uh, to provide that kind of reach and that, that experience and engagement with those customers to deliver those solutions. Um, especially with the very high fragmentation in the Android market, I think there's over 10,000 different variations now of Android devices, um, but an end user or a customer just wants to watch what they want to watch with what's in their pocket. And so making that possible is actually through the hard work uh, of folks like Odetto that are able to deliver that on the broadest array of platforms for us. So that, that, that raises an interesting question as to, you know, the, the, the tasks involved uh, with different customers. Is this a matter of repeatedly working with each customer to, to develop an uh, implementation of this solution that works for them? Or um, is it pretty well baked in based on your use of the SDK that uh, Microsoft has supplied in the first instance? Well, I think Microsoft <coughs> gives us the, the, the greatest device reach for platforms that they already exist on natively. Uh, they also offer the SDKs for us to embrace some of these, uh, these trickier platforms uh, to secure. Um, but they, the, the SDKs are you know, something we're very familiar with. Um, we, you know, our, our, our integration teams uh, can, can quickly deploy um, and, and secure those device platforms where, where the native components aren't, aren't resident. Um, and so, you know, by having us, uh, you know, ha having these strong partnerships with Invivio, uh, with us having the expertise and the knowledge and the relationships with Microsoft, we really can provide uh, a complete solution to the operator for a large range of, of, of channels uh, across the largest uh, range of devices as well. So, so it's fairly quick to implement. It's not some long drawn out process on a per operator basis. Um, you know, some platforms are, are trickier than others uh -huh. and, and more susceptible to theft than others, and it requires uh, it, it requires a, a specialization and um, and some development time. But um, for the most part, the, the the more these implementations that we we deploy, um, the faster it goes, the, the easier it gets. Has Play Ready Live been in the market long enough to get a feel for its impact on the licensing and and how that that's flowing because I know the licensing has been a big barrier as far as going live with TV everywhere. So I think so those are some of the, the legacy issues that we face. We've been, we've been um, evangelizing the ability to do live with PlayReady with key rotation, blackouts, advertising insertion with the largest mobile operators in the world over the last 18 months. Um, what we found was the complexity um, of bringing the, the entire solution to market really was dependent on our relationships and our working with our key partners like Invivio and Erdetto. Um, we, we solved one particular piece of the problem, but everything from the UI, UX, um, to the target device platforms, to the back-end infrastructure, to the content management systems, to the ad engine is involved. And so we're, we're at the point now in the market where major um, cable operators, major service providers are bringing this to market, um, but that's really in connection with, with our partners through the total solution. So this is where Halo comes in, uh, because that's, that's, right. that's where it really gets complicated. So I would say on, from, from an InVivio standpoint, it'll be easier than maybe on the Erdetto standpoint, because they get to work on the client, uh, on the client side, right? But for, uh, for us, uh, you know, every customer, every operator who has, you know, using coding and Halo network processing software um, is a software upgrade. You know, they already have PlayReady um, in place, you know, over Apple HLS or Microsoft Smooth Streaming to a number of devices, right? It doesn't matter. Uh, we apply that software upgrade, you know, in the in the data center, um, and they get the benefits of the, the new PlayReady Live. So we just pretty much turn it on as a uh -huh. as a feature. Right? So what what is? But coming back to my question, in terms of the impact on the content owners and and the um, uh, the freeing up of the licenses as a function of these capabilities, and I'll, I'll ask for each of you to give me some sense of how this is going to impact the market in that regard. Paul? Well, I mean, I think it's going to allow, um, you know, your traditional uh, TV distributors to, co you know, compete to have a, a much greater um, depth of content, of premium content, um, you know, maintaining a, a high level of security through a very advanced key rotation. Um, and, 
being able to deploy it in a very cost-effective manner um, and, and enable them to compete against some of the new entrants in the marketplace. Do you think it's going to have an impact on the licenses, though? It's, it, it, in other words, are, are more um, more content owners going to be prone to um, license the live distribution of their content by virtue of having the solution? I mean, I mean, I, I think that that you're going to see broad endorsement of this method of protection uh, of live programming um, to be to 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 uh, gain. A, probably the greatest amount of acceptance across the marketplace for, mm -hmm. for serving connected devices. Have you seen some, some real reactions and, and yeah, results? Yeah, absolutely. So we work very closely with the major studios and major content owners globally. And some of their largest concerns are they have these very high value premium assets, sometimes titles that have cost them 200, 300, 400 million dollars to produce. Um, and in the case of sports, that's in many countries, that's the only monetizable asset for those network providers and content owners. Mm -hmm. And their reticence to provide that to a broad set of people and a broad set of devices was because they were concerned about the security. Um, every major uh, service provider and studio that uh, person that I've talked to over the last year is very bullish on this and then our ability to then go down market and downstream to a number of devices to it, which before they, they wouldn't touch. They felt good about maybe doing it on Windows, uh, or on the Xbox and maybe a closed environment, but they were very leery about the Android platform in particular, mm -hmm. um, just because of the fragmentation and, and the potential you know, surface, uh, surface area of risk there. Um, but now they have a, a much higher degree of confidence. Um, and that goes for all the major content owners, whether it be sports uh, or premium movies. Um, highly interested in using this to then go to market and then be able to monetize that. Because that's the other piece too, is they were missing out on a major market opportunity. The time that a, that a new release is in the movie theater is relatively short. Um, but that long tail opportunity um, on devices was unattainable to them because they were leery to put it on those things, yes, yeah. right? So that, that was kind of a chicken or an egg thing, which we feel that we're collectively solving now. So that's exactly right. I think, uh, you know, it the, the nail on the head, uh, you know, we had the same feedback from our, you know, um, MSO customers. They've been actually holding off from, you know, rolling out a certain number, number of premium channels, especially sports content because of the, you know, the, the limitations, the prior limitations in, in security, right? So, and now that we have Playerity Live, one of the reasons they're, you know, actually implementing Playerity Live is to launch those, you know, high values, you know, mm -hmm. live sports channels and, and others. And, and the other, um, the other element is, is um, you said it right, is the monetization. Um, one thing is to secure it, but the other thing is you have to enforce uh, sports blackouts. You have to mm -hmm. be able to do um, targeted ad insertion in the right way yeah. on a per user basis on these channels, right? And the fact that the Playerity Lab has uh, this already baked in the framework mm -hmm. is key to uh, to uh, to enable those uh, those channels. Right? Well, then I guess we could do a little speculation on mm -hmm. what this is going to do in the marketplace, and 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 let's start with. Uh, what, if any, customers you might have that are interested in this, and, and who, what kinds of customers you're talking to about this, Paul? Well, I, I mean, as a service provider, a security server, a services uh, provider, you know, we, you know, our, our, our main market is the, you know, traditional television operator. Um, you know, I think that any MVPD with large volumes of linear content, broadcast content, um, are, are going to be the, you know, be first in line to take advantage of this new innovation. Um, this is critical to their business. It's critical to their future, and you know that that's where it belongs first. But uh, it applies to any any uh, live um, streaming service uh, on, online. Uh, anybody biting at this point? Uh, do you well, I, I mean, I think we work. We have uh, <coughs> deep seated relationships with your with your tier one, uh, um, you know. Cable companies in the United States, uh, you know, naturally being in the security business, can't mention uh, specific names. But you know, if you, it's a it's a pretty small uh, group of suspects, uh, uh -huh. and and that's that's who's active, um, that, that testing and deploying this this new innovation. So, with your view of of this setting the stage and being what the market needs. Um, in the year ahead, are we really going to see now this blossom as as the way that uh, the big service providers move ahead and and free them to get moving with this and have an agreement with the license holders as to how to divide up the pie and and, and figure all this out? Are, are we at a point where that's finally going to be resolved? And Paul, what what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think that you know. 
even though it's still relatively you know early days in the process, it is happening. And you know, as those legal uh, issues are worked out, uh, the content is starting to flow at at, at a very large volume. And um, you know, this is just the next step at, um, in evolution in making this the services stable. Uh, and and making the experiences as, as uh, you know, bringing it to the highest quality possible. Uh, that's that's what we're seeing right now. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, so I think this this solves a, a, a huge problem for both the service provider trying to meet consumer demand, but the content owner having stringent requirements uh, to go along with that. Um, and we've seen very fragmented, you know, rights based on big screen, little screen, medium screen. Mm -hmm. right, whether you're, I have the rights for this sport in France but not Belgium, or I have it in Belgium but I don't have it on tablet. And that, that was actually impeding both the customer experience but also the ability to go to market. And so this really unlocks a lot of that. Now there'll be other challenges, whether it's next versions of operating systems, which, you know, we feel confident that, that partnerships with our data will solve for, but this will not be that issue or problem or concern. Um, and so we'll all be able to kind of participate in that. Uh, most notably, those content owners will get more value out of their content, and service providers will deliver really compelling end user experiences, um, regardless of form factor or device type. Well, this is the linchpin, right? I mean, this is, this is where the rubber hits the road as to the future of pay TV. And so uh, what you guys are doing here should uh, be a real bellwether as to uh, where we're going to be in the next few months. I think uh, I think there's already a great example in the market of uh, you know what's to come in the if you heard of the the B Sky B uh, Sky Sky now service. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great example of uh, of uh, leverage you know how an operator can leverage you know uh, advanced features of you know over the top video to provide a, you know a broadcast like TV service to other devices. And they've done it extremely successfully you know with. Uh, you know, uh, going to devices like Roku or Xbox, right? Or, or, um, you know, and uh, they were afraid because of the quality uh, that we provide, actually, the quality of experience that we provide on that platform is as good or even better is what they've told us than their, their, their broadcast DTH platform. So there's some controversy that it would even cannibalize their, you know, their existing pay TV service. But what's happened in reality is it's, it's opened up a new market that they didn't have before. Uh, because a new demographic of younger people that didn't want to pay 90 pounds a month uh, for the DTA service are now, s are now signing on to the Sky service. You know, maybe they pay 20, 30 pounds a month and get the same channels on their Xbox. Uh, and, and it's more subscribers, right? It's growth and it's a beautiful experience. And I think you'll see the, you'll see the exact same things happening uh, in the U.S. Uh, very soon, right? And okay. And uh, with, as a matter of fact, we have, uh, we have um, um, along with Airdato and Microsoft, uh, we have uh, one Tier 1 cable MSO in the U.S. and another Tier 1 MSO in Europe, uh, just about to roll out Play, play Ready Live um, in the next few weeks. So we're getting ready to, to get that done. And, well, uh, I, I'm glad you shared that with us. Yeah. So uh, now, we, now we have something really to look forward to. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. This has been very informative and uh, a pretty optimistic view of what's ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.